Hi, this is Linda and welcome to my program. Before I get into anything, I just want to explain to you that I am going to be putting some things together for a Christmas store. And it's going to be called Help for the Holidays. And it is this little flyer, Help for the Holidays, and I'll put it up there as closely as I can uh, on the programming. But it's on December 12th from 1 to 4 in Fiddletown. There's only one big building in there. You can't miss it. You come through town and it's right there. And it is a free shopping spree. And it's for people who know they have needs at Christmas. And I have a feeling we're going to have a lot this year. A lot of people have lost a lot. There's a lot of jobs lost because of the virus and all that stuff's going around. So I want to give you some uh, good stuff to do. I, I can't believe people can be bored right now. I'll tell you what. I don't know. If you're bored, hang out with me. You'll never be bored. I can use your help, actually. So definitely give me a holler and maybe there's something you can do. Uh, anyway, what we're going to do is a two-fold project. Not only are we going to make these cute little drawstring bags out of a variety of colors. This is Christmassy. And then this one is anytime, but it's beautiful. And I'm using them for soaps. And I'm also going to use them for putting jewelry in that I make because I'm going to have a basket of these empty bags and people who shop can put their little gift in the bag. Wouldn't that make a great gift for somebody? Just the bag alone is a great gift. So we're going to make these, but we're also going to make the soaps because even though there is a how-to on YouTube, I just want to combine it with how I'm doing this. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is get yourself some soap. Okay, this is Dove. I got it at the dollar store for a dollar. You can buy them at Walmart in a box of 10, I think for 10.88. So I bought these. I'm making a lot of them, so I bought them from uh, Walmart. Um, and then we are going to cover them. You see, we're gonna make it really pretty on top. You can use any kind of paper napkin. Okay, I'll show you in a minute what I mean. But this one is a one for a guy. It's got a, a baseball on it and everything. So, uh, but what I've found are some napkins at the dollar store. So what I've done is I have removed the back ply. So what you do is you open it up and you simply open, you know, take the corner and begin to peel off the back side so that you have only one ply. And so I did this, I already peeled it, and it's very flimsy. The other thing you can use, and I think it's quite ingenious because, uh, you know, this uh, program, basically everything I do, I get my ideas and inspiration from the, from the Word of God, from the Lord Himself. And one of the things that I found the other day, just sitting on the floor, was a little tiny page from a little tiny Bible. Just a, a scripture page. It's the same consistency as this. So I thought, hmm, I'll do that. So I started putting the scriptures of a little tiny Bible on my soaps. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll show that one to you in a little while. But here is uh, this tissue. And you simply take, now I got this at the dollar store, Mod Podge. Of course you can get, you, you probably have Mod Podge at the house. I think you can actually make Mod Podge at home, but you can look online on how to make that. Like I said, you have probably everything you need at home. Um, and then, of course, a, um, what's it called? This, <laughs> a paintbrush. And um, what we wanna do, so easy, and it's so some anybody can do this. So you take your bar of soap, and I didn't mean to show this part to you. I really wanna show you the bags, but it's a two part, so hang on. So what you do is you take the soap, the, this bar of soap, okay, and you hold it this way and you put the paper behind it like that, okay? Now, there's other ways of doing it, but this is the easiest way that I found out. Pick the design you like. Then you just draw a pattern. Just draw around it with an ink pen, okay? I'll be right back. Okay, so I've drawn it and here's my circle. You simply cut it out. Let's cut this out together, right? And I'm going inside the line because I don't want that black to show up on my soap. Better to be smaller than too big. You don't want this to hang over the side of your soap because you want to be able to use your soap. And by the way, you can use this soap 
Uh, people have been using it already. And you just simply hold the top of the bar of the soap anyways and wash yourself. So when this is left over at the end, this is just goes in the garbage, right? When you're done. Okay, so now, so simple. Okay, so now what you do is you take this bar of soap and you've, I've already cut my little pattern out because I put it on top of my napkin and drew it around and then I cut it out just to reiterate. Then you take a paintbrush, dip it in your Mod Podge. And by the way, like I said, I got the Mod Podge at the dollar store. And you just put it on the top of the soap, very simply. Make sure it gets in all the areas of it. It doesn't have to be thick. If anybody's Mod Podge before, it's the same effect. All right. Then you take your tissue and simply lay it right on top. Square it in there the best you can. And then just kind of push the, push it around. Like that. Okay. If you tear it, just squish it back like I did. And you just go and make sure it's all around the edges. And like I, I see, I have a little bit hanging over on this side, so I'm just going to take my scissors and trim it. So make sure you just have all the little bubbles out. You just push it down. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so now all you do is you take another layer of Mod Podge and put it on top. And it's right on top of it. And that way you can actually push the edges down to make sure it, it's nice and tight along the edge. Because some of it was kind of lifted, so you put it under there and push it down like that. Make sure it's all over the top. Of course, Mod Podge is non-toxic, so it's okay. It's okay to wash with it. You kind of give it a generous coat. Okay. And that is it. What we're going to do is let this cure. That means let it dry, and we'll get back to this in a minute. Now let's get on to our little bags. Okay, just to reiterate a little bit here, I've got this one bag. It's pink, but it, so it can go with anything. You can put it for a birthday present, Christmas. But I made this soap. It's just a, it's a, I think this one's dial. It has a little bit of a shape to it. It's really cute, and that's what I put on top. Now it's shiny because when we get done with letting that dry, I'm going to show you what to do with the, with the rest of it to finish it off. The other thing is I did find this bar of soap and it is dial and I made it with a purple top. It had a purple lavender, smells really good and I just put a purple on the top of it. So just to get creative with your, your soaps. Okay, now here's my supplies. I've got ribbon. You can use any string, ribbon, uh, whatever you want. Make your own. You can make your own string, you know. Uh, but here's my basket. There's my basket of bags. So far, I've got Christmas ones, and I got the pink ones, and I have a lot of other material that you can use. Now you want to find material that when you cut it, it's not going to just fall apart, okay? Uh, and it's this sheer stuff. Don't use netting. Netting is too rough and it's too hard to sew on. I got this at the dollar store. I mean, excuse me. I got this at the thrift store, this whole bolt. And it's a perfect material for this bag. The other thing I did was I found some curtains. Look, you can use the curtain material. And the other one is, of course, this is the pink. And then I found this in the cell department at Joann's. So don't spend a lot of money on this. You might even have some stuff in your closet you don't wear anymore. Cut it up. Use it for your bags. 
just find something kind of sheer. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is I am gonna show you how to cut the pattern. All right, so this is 10 inches by seven and a half. So you can just make a square or just measure it on your cutting board. This is for this the little small bags. You can make them any size you want, but this is what I use. So I am gonna use this material. Now, what you wanna do is I like to make many of them. So I uh, fold them in half and I, and I fold them until I can, you know, get a nice fold here because I am going to cut the, uh, the length of it, the length of it this way, not the width because the length is what I want to cut with first. So then I use my cutting board and I do seven and a half inches. And there it is right there, seven and a half. And do it real straight. I can use it my cutting table here to make it straight. And then cut it. All right, so there's my strip. So now we have it open like this. And now I want to cut my length. So I'm going to do two at a time because it's still folded in half. If you don't like the bias on the end, you simply cut it off, which I will do. Make it nice and straight. Okay. And it's 10 inches. Okay, there's my 10 inch mark. I'm just gonna cut one of these because I'm just gonna show you how to make one. All right, of course I cut two because I had it folded in half. Let me put that aside. This is your pattern. It's so simple, that's it. So now you take the pattern and the on the top, you fold it down about an inch and a half on top and you iron it. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, so I ironed it. Now, some material, it's very hard to iron, but still do your best. So you want to iron it. You notice it's not exactly perfectly, you know, aligned straight, but that's okay because it, you're not going to even know when you get done sewing it. So now all I'm going to do is sew. So I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, so now I have this piece and I'm just going to sew. I'm not going to fold it under anything. I'm just going to sew it straight down. You don't have to salvage the end of it. You might want to use pinking shears if you want. To, if it's especially if it's a material that's going to ravel so then you just simply sew make sure you folded it to the back side front over to the back side and then just sew it real close to the edge but make sure you catch your material do a little back tack and then I lift up and turn it. I just spin it around and then I go over about, uh, I'm gonna say about, about, about this much, okay? Because I wanna have enough for my ribbon to go through. So whatever uh, size ribbon you use, you wanna make it, you know, that, that width. Uh, and you wanna leave a little at the top to make it look cute. So I'm just gonna, I like to use my pressure foot as my gauge on how, straight to make it. So I, I write it along the side of that first stitching. All right, so now that's what it looks like. Okay, now this is the back side. You put the right side together. Okay, don't worry about the ribbon yet. You do that last. Right side together and sew it here and then across the bottom, all right? Make sure that the top is matching and then across the bottom. All right. So now if you have peaking shears, you, you would use it now. I don't care if you have them or not. I happen to have some. So I am just going to pink the what I just sewed. Okay, so that it won't ravel on the inside. And a little bit on the bottom. Okay. 
I have threads, so I want to make sure I cut those threads. Okay, that's what it looks like. Now you simply turn it inside out, or right side out actually, and poke those corners out. Like that. Now I'm gonna go and iron it flat. So this is what it looks like when it's done. Now I'm gonna take my teeny tiny sharp scissors. These are the best ones to use. Little baby scissors. And you are going to carefully cut a little slit on the top layer of your thing on each side. Inside, if you see right here, I cut it on the one side of the seam and I'm gonna cut one on the other side of the seam. If you accidentally cut through, that's okay. Just make sure you cut a slit. So I just kind of pick it up, maybe cut a little bit and try to dig my little scissor under there like that. On both sides so that I need to put my ribbon through there. So there's that. Then I'm gonna do the same thing on the fold right here inside that casing area. Just one slit like that one little slit and on this one I like to use some red it'll show up really nice on camera too um, let's see this is new so let me take this tape off uh, okay and each bag might be cut a little differently so you want to make sure you measure it so what I do is I just kind of measure it like this and I make sure that there's like about this much off on the edge and then I cut it okay there's one and I just take another one and I cut there and now you need a safety pin so this, the materials that you need to make this bag is a sewing machine uh, the material, some ribbon, a safety pin, and some little tiny scissors. Okay, you probably have this all around the house. So let me go and find my safety pin. And again, have all your materials ready. <laughs> I wasn't ready. So I got these at the dollar store. So here's my safety pins. And I'm just going to take the medium size. pin out and get one of these. Oh, it's got a box. How about that? That's a very nice setup. <laughs> well then, it's probably taped. Okay, no. All right, so I open it up and I take one of my little safety pins out. Hook it on the end like a double. Just throw it twice like that. And then close it. And then you start on any on any place where the hole is. I like to start on the part where it's been uh, seamed together, and I poke it through. Make sure when you start poking it through that you go inside the casing. Sometimes if you cut all the way through, your pin gets behind. So you want to make sure you shove it in between the two pieces of material, and then just push it through all the way here. You see like this and you just keep going some of you know how to do casing ribbons and then you come to that corner where you've got that hole keep going don't stop there sometimes it pops out like that just did so make sure you keep going all the way around to meet okay see I'm already getting I gotta get it in there Get it in that next pot because I wanted to pop out because there's a hole there. So I keep going. This is the trick on making it a really cool bag. And come on, get out there. It doesn't take that long. And then it pulls out. Okay, take the safety pin off. Make sure these two ends are together and then make a knot, tying the two ends together. 
So now that can't come out. And you don't want to just do this, right? You don't want to just have it like that. You want to have it both sides. So then you take your safety pin again, thread this ribbon with it. Now instead of this side, you start on this side, okay? So now on the crease side, you poke it through. And it's really good if the ribbon's behind it already because it goes right in. You don't have to hunt for the, for the backing or the casing. And you just simply do this. And you go all the way around. Now you'll see you've got to come out on this end because it's seamed. You just keep going. Go into the next hole and keep going. All the way around. And then you come out on that side. Make sure that the ends are together. Take the safety pin off and tie a little loop with the strings together like that and tie it. Now look, you simply take the sides and pull it out to make it nice and straight. Look at that. Isn't that cute? Okay. That's all there is to making these bags. Now what we're going to do is our soap is, done, is already ready to go. It's already dried. It doesn't take long for Mod Podge to dry. You want to put a little bit of Varathane or a sealant on top. We finished our bag. Now let's get back to the soap. It is dry by now. The Mod Podge is all dry. But you want to put a sealant on the top of it. So I use Liquidex. You can use Verithane, you can use whatever you've got around the house. And I put it in a little container, which I got at the dollar store, by the way. Um, and I just have a little bit because you don't need much. And so I don't want to waste this big bottle of stuff or dry it out. So I put it in here and then I just dip it in here and brush it over the top just to seal it. This doesn't take long to dry either. Yeah, just a little bit. All around. Okay. That's it. That's it for that soap. Now let me show you some variations on the soap. Here's one that's already done. It's just like this one. It's the uh, Harvest Colors. But what we can do, which is a really fun thing, is to decorate the soap as well. And um, let me show you how I do that. So you can just get ribbon, raffia, whatever you want. And then just tie it around. Make a bow on top. Or tie it in a knot. It's probably easier with some of this raffia. It's a little hard. And it makes a little, a little thing like this. Cut the ends off. And now you have a really cute little bar of soap. I mean, just adding this little extra to it. it. Presentation is everything, people. This is just a bar of soap, but look what I've turned it into. And you set it like that. Isn't that a beautiful gift? Oh my gosh, I'd like to get one of these. Okay, and so the other thing that we can do is use scriptures. Now, I'm going to show you my little Bible. I had this Bible. I got it at a thrift store years and years ago. I actually marked it up and because I read it many times carrying it around in my pocket. It's a pocket Bible. But the pages are perfect for this and the size is perfect. So I want to pull out, maybe you like a scripture, a psalm or something, uh, and you can pick out what you want. And I'm going to pull out a piece here. I'm just going to rip out a little piece of my paper. And use these scripture words and you do the same thing you simply lay this down on top of it draw around cut it and then just mod podge it right on top make sure you finish it off by putting the liquidex or the verithane on the top of it and then of course you can add ribbon um, sometimes i'll add uh, a strip of a wide ribbon and then put the the raffia on top. So there's a variety of ways to doing this. That's it. So simple, so fun. Anybody 
can do it. Now for my favorite part. I am gonna show you some of my creations that I am gonna put in those little bags. Okay, so we have this basket of bags and I'm gonna use a Christmassy one. And I wanna put, so I made this necklace. I learned from, uh, the, the beads, I'm telling you what, I gotta tell you about these. These I made and the lady that I learned them from is um, Susan Bailey and her website or her Facebook is Turtle Soup Beads. Yes, that's right, Turtle Soup Beads. And I learned how to make all these beads by polymer clay and then I learned how to weave and do um, embroidery with beads and make a necklace. Isn't that beautiful? Anyway, so these things I can just pop inside this cute little bag. Isn't that a cute gift? So again, these are the really cool, this is a bracelet, dangly bracelet. That would be cool in one of those bags. Now here's another thing that I did. This is a soap dish. This is uh, what we're making for the Christmas uh, program, the, the Christmas uh, shopping spree. And we made these little green things out of felt. And then I labeled with my little stampy kit um, what's inside. So this is basically, oh, I guess it didn't, I have to tie it in. Okay, good to know. Um, so this goes right in here. But what I did was I made one of these soaps and I just set it on a nice dish. It's like, a, this looks like a leaf. I got it at the uh, thrift store. Wrap it up in cellophane. I got this at the dollar store. So I mean, seriously, uh, you can you can make one of these for under two dollars, including soap, raffia, ribbon, tie, everything. Okay, that's a pretty darn nice gift. Okay, the other thing that I did, I told you earlier about, was the soaps with scriptures. You see the little soaps in there? They have the scripture. And also, I tied on, you'll see right here, raffia across it. And I put it on a platter, a Christmas platter, and put what's on the outside and everything for our gift, our, our shop. Here's another one. This one's a nice big plate. I actually had enough room to put a candle in it. And then these soaps, aren't those beautiful? Those can be Christmas, fall, anytime, set beautifully in someone's bathroom. You can also have, just get a dish. It doesn't have to be a soap dish because they can use it for anything else that they want. And that's a nice gift. And this I got at the uh, thrift store. And I had these brand new candles I just had. I just stuck it in there and I made the soaps. So there's my show and tell. I hope you enjoyed that. And I look forward to seeing what you created. Have a wonderful day. You've been watching Restoring Your Life with author, teacher, and minister Linda Lang. Restoring Your Life is the outreach of Life Application Ministries in Ockham, California. To contact or support this program, visit our website at restoringyourlife.tv or write Life Application Ministries, P.O. Box 165, Mount Ockham, California, 95656, or call 530-620-4641. Join us next time and continue restoring your life.